Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ahmed from the Veteran Anatomy channel and today we will talk about the blood supply of the forelimb of the dog. So let's get started. Here, as you can see, we have a forelimb you know, removed from the body. We are looking at the medial surface of the forelimb where we can actually find, you know, the arteries and the nerves. Here is crania. This is the cranial surface of the forelimb. This is the caudal surface of the forelimb where we have the latissimus dorsi, for example, extends to the thorax wall. This is, of course, the scapula. So that means this is proximal and here is distal. Here we have the scapula area, this is here the shoulder joint, here we have the humerus, elbow joint, and the radius and anna down. So let's get started here. What I have done actually, I just put, you know, all nerves together here. At the end of this video, we will uh, go through them, and all of them are um, from the brachial plexus, but we will focus more on the arteries. Let me just remind you that, you know, uh, the left, in this case, this is the left forelimb. So the left subclavian artery gives a lot of branches inside the, the thorax cavity and after that moves out of the thorax cavity um, by giving outside the thorax cavity what's called the, the superficial cervical artery. So this is the superficial cervical artery there from the name will run to the uh, neck. After that, uh, the um, subclavian artery gives another branch called the external thoracic artery. And from here, we can name it as axillary artery. So this is the axillary artery in this area here. The axillary artery gives firstly uh, this branch here, which moves caudally called the lateral thoracic artery the lateral thoracic artery. After that, and if we know, before moving down, it gives a big branch, this one here, called the subscapular artery. The subscapular artery moves caudal to the scapula, as you can see, on the way it gives some branches. So the branches from the subscapular artery, the first one is that branch, which moves toward the latissimus dorsi called the thoracodorsal artery. So this is the thoracodorsal artery from the subscapular um, artery. Uh, here, just for your information, the thoracodorsal artery runs together with the thoracodorsal nave from the brachial plexus toward the latissimus dorsi. The second branch from, uh, from the sub scapular artery, this big branch which moves caudal to the shoulder joint called the caudal circumflex, uh, circumflex humeral artery. Caudal circumflex humeral artery. After that, we can find here this artery which moves cranial to the uh, humerus called the cranial circumflex humeral artery. In some cases, we found the cranial circumflex humeral artery originally directly from the axillary or from the brachial artery. So after giving the subscapular, subscap again, subscapular gives the thoracodorsal artery, it gives the caudal circumflex humeral artery, and in this case, the cranial circumflex humeral artery, and after that moves caudally here, and upward behind the scapula and give some branches to the muscles there. After giving the subscapular artery, we can name the, the axillary artery here as a brachial artery, brachial artery. If you follow the brachial artery, the brachial artery gives caudodistally here, um, a big branch runs toward the triceps, the triceps, muscle called the deep brachial artery deep brachial artery if you follow you know the the deep brachial artery of course gives 
uh, blood supply to the triceps, all heads of the triceps and other muscles we can see here in this area. If you go down here, you will find that from the brachial artery, we have another branch moves called distally uh, along or follows the ulnar nerve called the collateral ulnar artery. Collateral ulnar artery moves in this way here next to the ulnar nerve. More distally here, we can see another branch from the brachial artery goes directly to the biceps brachii. This is the bicipital artery. This is the bicipital artery to supply the biceps brachii. At the same time here, we can see another branch from the brachial artery moves superficially and cranially here called the superficial brachial artery okay if we move down now from the brachial artery at the level of the elbow joint we can find another artery here uh, called the transverse capital artery transverse capital artery after giving the transverse capital artery we can name this artery here from here as a median artery the median artery below the elbow joint gives as you can see under under this muscle this is the uh, brunator teres muscle this is the brunator teres um, it gives some muscular branches as you can see i will show you this is some muscular branches at this level here and after that from the median artery we can see a very big branch goes or runs directly between the two bones of the antibrachium. We mean the radius and ulna. So this is the common interosseous artery. The common interosseous artery from the median artery. After that, the median artery moves down. Here, at this level here, it gives the deep antibrachial artery from the name. It, it moves deeper there between the muscles of the antibrachium and in this case we mean this group of muscles the flexor muscles of the digits and the carpus or carval joint so what is the name of this branch is the deep antibrachial artery from the median artery so after that if we move down let me just move the forelimb like this so from the median artery at this level here it gives another branch superficially moves cranially cranially to the radius called the radial artery this is the radial artery responsible for to supply the structure in the uh, cranial aspect here with blood so the radial artery after that the median artery moves down and uh, um, supply the caudal structures tendons muscles found at the caudal aspect of the bow or of the distal fore limb so this is all what we can uh, say about the arteries uh, should we go through the arteries one more time let's do it we say it from the left subclavian artery in this case uh, we have uh, another branch here uh, the superficial cervical artery we have also the external it's it's here the external thoracic artery after that uh, this artery called the axillary the axillary gives the lateral thoracic artery caudally here and after that it gives the subscapular artery from the subscapular artery we have the thoracodorsal artery to the latissimus dorsi we have the caudal circumflex humeral artery the cranial circumflex humeral artery the axillary artery will be named from here as a brachial artery the brachial artery gives caudally here or caudodistally the deep brachial artery toward the triceps muscle after that the next branch is the collateral ulnar artery down here we have cranially the bicipital artery and the superficial brachial artery um, at the level of the elbow joint uh, the brachial artery gives 
the transverse capital artery from here we can name it as median artery the median artery gives brachial uh, sorry muscular branches here and after that big branch moves toward the space between the radius and ulna called the, the in the common inter uh, osseous artery after that the median artery moves down and gives caudally here the deep antibrachial artery deep antibrachial artery moves further distally here and gives cranially the radial artery this is the radial artery and moves to the caudodistal cauda area of the forelimb as a median artery here let me um, you know go through the nerves one more time but of course if you need more details about the brachial plexus and the innervation of the forelimb of the dog please go ahead and find uh, another video where we describe them in details but here we will go through them as we can see them from the brachial plexus here we can find some nerves let's go firstly with this one which we mentioned before this is the thoracodorsal nerve you know for the innervation of the latissimus dorsi moves uh, uh, next to the thoracodorsal artery let's put it on the muscle like this here cranially we can see this big nerve which moves between the sub scapular muscle and the supraspinatus muscle this is the suprascapular nerve and here we can find some uh, nerves uh, going directly to the subscapular uh, muscle called the subscapular nerves let's put them also to the side uh, exactly between the subscapular muscle and the teres major muscle at this area at the level of the shoulder joint behind the shoulder joint we can see or find this big nerve here called the axillary nerve axillary nerve on the way it gives innervation to the caudal part of the subscapular muscle to the teres major muscle to the teres minor and finally to the deltoid muscle let's put it also to the side here here we can see another nerve uh, which uh, innervate on the way here the coracobrachial muscle and mainly the biceps uh, brachii let's put it also to the side here we have uh, this big nerve which starts from the medial surface and moves between the two heads of the triceps to the lateral surface this is the radial nerve responsible for the innervation of all extensor muscles of the forelimb except the extensors of the shoulder joint and finally here down we can see these two nerves one moves directly on the medial aspect of the forelimb is the median nerve the other one moves caudally is the ulnar nerve which um, uh, you know run next to the collateral ulnar artery here both of them are for the innervation of the flexors of the uh, uh, carbo uh, joint and uh, the digits uh, for more information about the muscles, we have um, also another video describing all the muscles in the lateral, all extensors and the flexors of the forelimb or of the joints of the forelimb in another video. Go ahead and uh, look at it. So that was everything for today. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, just go ahead and put your question in the comments. So, and see you later.